Wrath of the Lich King was when Blizzard really started to make steps to modernise World of Warcraft and take out a lot of the older and more clunky content, which didn't make as much sense in this new and up-to-date game. Of course, the Cataclysm was the real turning point where they did the full world revamp to old zones and questing, but Wrath also changed quite a few things, and even went so far as to remove a whole bunch of content from the game which had existed from, well, from the very beginning. In fact, I think you'll be surprised by some of the features that will already be gone in Wrath. Today I want to go over a few different pieces of content that either existed in Classic or TBC that you should no longer expect to be in the game once Wrath is out. And many of these legacy tasks will become feats of strength, so if you want to have as much achievement progression on your account as possible, or just to have some things in your possession as keepsakes, then time is starting to work against you. Some of these are definitely more obscure than others and don't really serve any purpose other than just having them for the sake of it, but I thought it'd be interesting to cover them nevertheless. But before we go on, a quick word from today's sponsor, Noah's Heart. Noah's Heart is an upcoming open world RPG which, as of this video going live, is holding registration for its open beta testing. Explore the vast and seamless open world of Noah filled with treasure and danger in equal measure. From frozen mountain tops to arid deserts, lush forests and more, there's a huge amount of ground to cover and things to see. Noah's Heart also has a few special mechanics to enhance exploration too, such as the jetpack to get a good aerial view and cross great distances, or the grappling hook to access hidden areas or loot. Noah's Heart features an extensive character creation system whereby you can modify pretty much anything that you can see by making it longer, wider, bigger, smaller, different colours, styles and so on. Instead of a standard class system, Noah's Heart allows you to pick a weapon during character creation that will shape what kind of combat your character will do, from the longer range bow and arrow backline kind of gameplay to the classic sword and board up in your face melee. The combat itself focuses on free movement, speed and dodging big attacks from a whole host of different enemies and bosses possess and fight alongside up to three phantoms that will bolster and fill out your party to overcome tough challenges and build out a team that works for you. Noah's Heart features diverse careers to check out and level up, including fishing, cooking, taming, and many more. The registration for Noah's Heart open beta has now begun. Take the chance to explore this massive world and all its features early by clicking the link below and downloading it for free. Many thanks to Noah's Heart for sponsoring this video. Let's talk WoW. We should start off with some current TBC content that a lot of people missed back in the day, but I feel in Modern Classic is a lot more common. These are the two titles awarded from completing the TBC Attunement Chains for Tempest Keep and SSC, and later Black Temple and Mount Hyjal. Champion of the Naru was the first one that was earned. This was a reward added during original TBC after the Attunement Chain had been removed from the game, to give players that had undergone the full trials of the Naru a unique reward. The questline started in Shadowmin Valley with the notoriously long cycle of Damnation questline and they're led to completing several TBC heroics whilst undergoing some challenges. The final two parts were the Cudgel of Kardesh, we must defeat Gruul in his lair, and then Nightbane in Karazhan, as well as the Trial of the Naru, Magtheridon. However, when Blizzard removed this title during the Wrath of the Lich King launch, they left in the quest that could trigger its reward. So if you do have those last two quests in your journal, you can do this quest whenever you want and still get the title. The quests themselves will still exist during Wrath, however they've been moved to a different island. ID and won't give the title anymore. And the Vidal functions in a similar way to when this you need to have completed the Vials of Eternity, which is defeating Lady Vash in SSC and Kael'thas in Tempest Keep, as well as having completed the Black Temple Attunement questline, which is another very long quest chain starting in Shadow Moon Valley from the quest Tablets of Bari. I'd recommend checking out the Attune add-on if you're interested in either of these as they itemise and go through every single step you need to do really cleanly. Another TBC feature, it feels obvious, but hey, I've got to give it a mention. People would call me out if I didn't. If you're currently one of the four or five people on your server who doesn't have the Amani Warbear, just know it will be removed from the game in Wrath. Zulamon itself is a pretty chill raid. Even the majority of pugs can hit the timer and get the bear as an extra reward, no problem. If it's something you want from the game, think about it sooner rather than later. Oh, and just to give it a mention, I feel like somebody out there may want to know, no, the Zorga rub mounts aren't removed from the game in Wrath, that doesn't happen until Kata, when the raid is turned into a dungeon and the drop tables are updated. Though throughout Wrath, you can feel free to farm the Raptor and the Tiger mounts then. Let's move on to some raiding content. Nax Ramus 40 will no longer be in the game once Wrath releases. It will stop being a raid instance and all of various collectibles or items from it will be removed from the game. The opening tier of Wrath the Lich King 
being reused as Nax Ramus because nobody really saw it in vanilla, so hey, free content. Let's copy paste that. Tier 3 gear will no longer be obtainable. You've got to get all that transmog for Kata Classic, though, of course, right? Corrupted Ashbringer will restore its status as a legendary item that barely anybody has, and I swear, even during the many clears I did of Nax Ramus, I only saw a handful of these. The various gear made from frozen runes in the game will be gone, as well as your ability to farm out ATS shards to create the legendary staff yourself. So if you're after anything from Nax 40, then you need to think about that now. Another vanilla raid now, in fact all of them underwent some changes, just to different degrees, but I want to talk about Anixia, and I'm not quite sure how they will approach this one, but I'd assume it will be in the same way they did things during Wrath. So around patch 3.2, that's Trial of the Crusader, Blizzard removed Onyxia 40 man from the game and revamped it as level 80 content for 10 or 25 man. This new Onyxia had upgraded loot drops reminiscent of all the various things she dropped during vanilla such as Viscag or Deathbringer. The mature Black Dragon Sinew also disappeared from the drop table meaning you couldn't complete the Rock Dalark quest line but was later re-added to various dragon kin from the Burning Steps. She also drops tier 2 items with some updated stats and a variation for each spec that every class had, hint hint season of mastery. Moving on though, remember during class Classic when you were making your Thunder Fury, part of that was mind controlling a goblin inside Blackwing Lur and then having them teach the person with mining how to smelt Elementium. It was a totally unique interaction which I personally thought was really cool. I mean they could have just made the goblin drop a bug to teach you how to do this but nope you have to mind control them. Until Wrath of the Lich King that is because guess what, yeah he just drops a bug now instead. Speaking of convenience features, the need for douses to progress Molten Core and eventually be able to summon Ragnaros were also removed from the game. This is part of another pretty long quest line starting from Duke Hydraxis, who has been tactically positioned in literally the worst and most annoying place to get to imaginable. Perhaps that was part of the journey though. Either way, at the end of his quest line, each player can earn an Aqual Quintessence. These were used to douse runes of the Fire Lord inside Molten Core. Later in patch 1.11, Blizzard added an Eternal Quintessence, which was the same as the other version. You could just reuse it. In Wrath though, if you're doing Molten Core, that is, for whatever reason, you go in, you kill the bosses, and and that is about it, real simple. Okay, enough on raids then, let's talk about some classes. Again, I feel like people put a whole lot on Cataclysm for changing this, but Raph did make a start on it. Part of the rogue's core class fantasy has always been around poisons. From that quest, we have to sneak around high level enemies to then brewing your own concoctions. The rogue from day one of vanilla has had to level up poisons like an additional profession. And in Wrath, well, um, you don't. Brewing poisons as your own skill has been removed from the game. I was kind of surprised when I found out about this. I thought this happened in Kata, but nope, it is in Wrath. The vendors that would previously sell you your poison ingredients now just straight up sell the poisons to you wholesale. And all those materials that went into brewing your poisons now become trash items, though they can still be obtained from lockboxes. Oh, and yes, lockpicking and lockboxes, those are still a thing in Wrath, though you don't need your thieves' tools anymore to do it. Next up, have you played a druid in vanilla? Did you remember doing the aquatic form quest line? Oh boy, I do, and it was uh, okay, to be honest, it was one of my less like class quests. Everything was just so far apart in it. Well, speaking from having done it on the Alliance side at least, maybe the Horde version is better. And in Wrath, well, actually it doesn't get removed from the game, but it kind of does. You don't need to do a quest anymore to unlock aquatic form, you can just train it like you can with cat form at level 16. However, if you really do want to go out of your way and do the quest, it now awards this belt, which is pretty good for the level you can get it at. Is it worth the effort to do? Well, you can decide that for yourself. Last set of class changes now, the Hunter. So your pet undergoes a pretty huge rework in Wrath. The whole pet training, loyalty and the training point system they had all goes in the bin and is completely reworked. Now I'm going to be honest, a lot of this system just didn't make sense. And somebody explained to me how in order to teach your pet a new ability, you have to do the following. Stable your current pet, which you use all of the time, travel out into the world, find a pet that has the ability rank you want or just the ability you want, tame that pet, have it spam the ability until somehow you personally learn it, then abandon that pet, go to your original pet from the stable, magically teach it what you just learned 
from that other pet which you abandoned for five minutes and now your pet can use that ability forever. I get a lot of the class flavor and fantasy stuff in old school WoW, but even in a world with magic and dragons, this just doesn't make any sense. Anyways, after being tamed, pets will auto level up to five levels minimum below the hunter and they will take way less time to level, like way, way less time. At level 80, pets all have 16 talent points as well as a new talent tree. Pets are either ferocity, which is DPS, tenacity for tanking, or cunning, which is more of a PvP spec. Each pet still had a special ability, such as crabs having pin, for instance. And yes, you can respect your pet to a different tree as well. Pets' happiness to increase their damage is still a thing, but it's way easier to keep at maximum since loyalty is now gone. This also means your pet will no longer run away if you just completely neglect it. Pretty much all you have to do is throw them some food every now and again, and they are good to go. And yes, in case you're wondering, hunters do still have to carry around a quiver or pouch for their ammo. One final thing that's worth a mention, not in the game yet, but it will be for a short space of time, is all the content that will come with the Wrath of the Lich King pre-patch. Hopefully it's longer than the two weeks we had for the TBC pre-patch this time around, and it's going to contain a bunch of items for a limited time event, such as the Arcanite Ripper or the Blessed Battle Gear of Undead Slaying to name two. But I'll have to sort a proper video out to go over everything in the pre-patch, which will happen a little closer closer to when it'll be. There we go then, a few items, titles, mounts, or just bits of class flavour that will be gone with the expansion. I think it will become more noticeable once we have Wrath for real that it really did start to streamline things quite a bit. It didn't stop it from being hugely successful back in the day though, and I very much expect that trend to return. If there's anything else that you think's big that was removed from the game or matters to you, do drop it down below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you all in the next one very soon.